All right, everyone. Welcome to the Small Business Stabilization Grant Workshop for Joe Davis County Part 2, co-hosted by Joe Davis County Planning and Development and Northwest Illinois Economic Development. My name is Emily Legal. I'm the Executive Director of Northwest Illinois Economic Development, and I'm joined by Eric Tyson, the Director of the Planning and Development Department. We're here today to walk you through the requirements and documentation and tips and frequently asked questions for the Joe Davis County Small Business Grant. And we'll take it from here. For those of you on the call, this webinar is being recorded. And if you'd like a copy of this webinar after this, please reach out to my office and I should be able to get you a recording within 24 hours. All right, uh, Eric, do you wanna go over the basics of it? Sure. Uh, this is the uh, second application period. Um, for the Small Business Stabilization Grant. Um, it has been open um, since uh, the middle of May. Um, the form is available on the county website. Um, uh, the link is highlighted there in green. Um, and the application period will be open until uh, 4 p.m. Uh, next Friday, uh, the 12th. Um, those businesses that have not already received a grant um, uh, who were deemed non-essential pursuant to the executive order um, that was issued um, what seems a lifetime ago. Um, and um, want to be clear that the county believes small non-essential businesses are in fact an essential part of the business and culture of the community while recognizing the significant financial impact of the current health crisis. Um, so uh, regarding the eligibility requirements, um, this um, was amended slightly from the first round of applications. Um, so uh, small, businesses with no more than 12 full-time or full-time equivalent employees um, that could in in fact equate to um, more than six more than 12 people um, because they're working part-time uh, restaurants sole proprietorships hairstylists salons and artisans are eligible um, the physical business location um, was um, required last year um, that has also been expanded to include home-based businesses, uh, salons, um, barbershops, bed and breakfasts, and daycare providers that work out of their home. Um, there is a grant agreement uh, included with the application. Uh, again, that is on the county website. Um, and the intent would be for the business uh, to use this money to remain open for one year following the grant award. Um, recipients cannot have been awarded any form of federal or state um, virus related monetary relief um, and they m sh should have attempted to exhaust all sources of funding as this is meant to be a last resort. Uh, qualifying expenses as designated by the county uh, include rent or mortgage. Um, again, the the exceptions to expand do include home-based salons, barbershops, bed and breakfast, and daycare providers. Um, a uh, utility payments, um, typical uh, utility payments, electric, gas, uh, inclusive of municipal water, uh, phone and internet service, even um, local garbage collection. Uh, the maximum award amount is. Um, up to $5,000. However, your qualifying expenses may not reach that maximum award amount. Uh, that's where the documentation comes into play. Uh, the grant agreement uh, is included with the application. It does not need to be returned um, in order to have your application reviewed. Um, it um, will identify the award amount um, confirm the number of employees, um, states that the business is not essential, um, and that the qualifying expenses are not otherwise covered. Um, the business owner and applicant will 
affirm that they are going to remain open. Um, it is possible uh, additional information might be requested. Um, and the recapture portion of this um, allows the county an opportunity to recoup the grant amount uh, if in breach of any of the sections of the agreement. Moving on, one, one issue we did run into in round one, it seemed to be one of confusion for a majority of our applicants, was documentation. In order for the county to approve your grant application, you need to have some document of everything you want to be covered with this grant. It could include documentation for your rent or mortgage payment, for your gas bill, your water bill, your electric, um, phone, internet, cable, etc., and also your garbage. What does this look like? Essentially, it looks like proof of some sort. It can be a copy of the bill for the most recent month available. For example, your May electric bill for an application due in June. It can be a bank statement with expenses eligible, eligible expenses highlighted on it. So a rent payment that's taken out, a utility payment with it saying who to, to whom it goes. It can be a copy of a check or a cancel check or one application we did approve in round one, even just had a written budget and we were able to cross check numbers with other applications to see if it was reasonable or not. Per the funding requirements on page two of the grant application, you will get up to the equivalent of one month of expenses as shown in the documentation. If you do not document your expenses, we cannot verify that it meets the requirements and we will be unable to give you your allocation for the money, just because we need to keep in mind the legalities of it since we're dealing with state and federal money and also just government money in general. It's not as simple because we have to, we're accountable. Um, in addition, we have some application tips. Let us know why you should receive the money. So what your business is and what do you do? Some of our non-essential businesses are, have really simple business models like a restaurant that serves food to people in a small town, while other businesses may be a little bit more obscure. Basically, we just want to know that you're a legitimate business and that this money will help you pay expenses to stay in business. So one award was Glad Rags of Stockton. She requested money to pay her rent. And then another award had utilities included in the rent. And that was both fine. And if you have plans for growth, let us know. And this can be bullet points or narrative. Application tips for business operations, just let us know a little bit more. What do you do, what you sell, make, how you contribute. If there's a reason why you don't qualify for federal or state aid or get minimal, list it here. Um, one thing that I've run into with Paycheck Protection Program is that people, sole proprietors who showed a loss last year weren't eligible, so we're making sure. So we have this, or we have people who don't have payrolls because they're a startup or what have you. Um, basically, just let us know that you'll remain open, if you'll be open in a year, what what steps you're taking. Um, I know some shops in Galena have gotten an online store set up while others like Gladrags have done Facebook Lives and just anything else you want the committee to know. Um, frequently asked questions that we've come across. Eric, do you want to take some of these or how do you? Um. I'll, um, I can I can go over these. Um, I think I had indicated uh, that first question uh, to a, a bit of a degree earlier. Um, Full-time equivalent means you could actually have more than 12 people working for you. Um, they're um, um, possibly on a part-time hourly schedule. So, um, uh, that just because you have more than 12 people working for you doesn't necessarily mean you wouldn't qualify uh, to receive grant funding. Um, next, um, if you own a hair salon, um, we would encourage you to apply. Um, there is specific inclusion, especially if you're operating um, that business out of your home. Um, and I, I alluded to the next question uh, a little bit as well. You do not need to include the grant agreement with your application to have it reviewed. Um, we will follow up with you 
with that grant agreement should you receive an award. Um, and um, you do not have to email your application, uh, but it would be easy. Um, uh, regular mail and fax, uh, if you're still using fax, are absolutely acceptable. One quick note, if you send it by mail, or please make sure it gets it, you send it by mail with adequate time. With round one, we did have an application that was postmarked before the due date, but didn't arrive until after, and their application had to be moved to round two. If you're ever in doubt, please, you are welcome to drive to the Hanover office and put it in the Davis County Planning Department mailbox, or to just drop it off at the office yourself. Office hours are absolutely. Yep. Office hours are eight to Monday through Friday, and we're ha we're happy to take it. We want you guys to get the money, which is why we're offering so many different options with this. Um, when you get the money, awards will be made by the committee. At this moment, we don't have any meetings planned, but we hope to get these announced by the end of June. Round one saw the committee meeting the week after applications were due with awards announced that the next day after the county had approved them. Depending on what schedules look like, it will be by the end of the month at the very latest. And then it also depends on when you get your grant agreement in to the county if you don't submit it with your application. I want to have been breakfast. You are eligible to apply. With this new application, we did include bed and breakfast as one of the few home-based businesses that were eligible per the lobbying, successful lobbying of the bed and breakfast in our county. We know it's hard and we included you in the application requirements. My business was supposed to open in April, but due to being non-essential, we couldn't. Can we apply? We strongly encourage you to apply for this. We've already given an award to a business that was slated to open in April, who did have a physical location and meet other requirements for the grant. And given that new businesses are not eligible for Paycheck Protection Program and Economic Injury Disaster Loan, we're happy to help out however we can because you're county businesses and we want you to survive. And it's not your fault that you just happened to schedule your opening when a pandemic hit. No one predicted this. I don't have an, e an employer identification number. Can I apply? Reach out to our office. We'll discuss it with you. I know some sole proprietors use um, social security numbers and it was a, an acceptable documentation on um, the Illinois Hospitality Grant among other applications and we'd be happy to work with you. I receive, if you receive federal unemployment benefits as a result of COVID, this does not count as state or federal aid as you would receive these if you were an employee as well as the employer. And what if I received only minimal help from the PPP? Can you apply? In most cases, per the grant requirements, you are not eligible if you have received PPP money. However, for extreme cases, um, such as less than $1,000, we are willing to work with you. Um, let us know ahead of time so we don't automatically rule you out, but we were able to make an award to someone who had been offered the PPP, but it had been such an insignificant amount it wouldn't have been worth it per their accountant. All right, applications first come, first serve. No, all applications received before the deadline of Friday, June 12th at 4 p.m. are considered equally because different people in the county are connected in different levels. We wanna make sure that everyone gets a chance to submit their applications. I received an offer for the PPP, but I haven't signed the papers. This is a grant as a last resort. You probably aren't eligible if you have been offered the PPP or let us know if it's an extreme case and we'll talk to you before the committee meets and we'll see what we can do. All right, that's all we have. Do we have any questions from those of you on the line? Anything that we didn't answer that you'd like to know? Any additional questions? Eric, do you have anything you want to add to this? I do not. I think we've covered everything that we have for you today. If you have additional questions about this grant or others, 
or other financial opportunities, please reach out to the Northwest Illinois Economic Development Office at E-L-E-G-E-L -E -E at N-W-I-L-E-D.org or give us a call or send Eric an email and we would be happy to answer any additional questions. And last but not least, please tell your friends about this. We gave out $41,000 in round one. There's still a good deal amount of money left and we wanna help you guys because we know it's we know you're struggling and the county board was very kind in putting this together. So we're happy to do whatever we can. All right, that's all we have for you today. Have a great day and I'm going to stop this recording and log off.